how should people not use AI tools? Like, what should the what are the things that they should not probably do? That that's hard to answer. I guess it kind of becomes intuitive to me that I'm not just going to trust it. I'm not going to say, should I go to the doctor yeah. and do whatever AI says uh, that I should do in that situation? Hello everyone, I'm Shivai from Pieces for Developers. Today I'm going to be asking folks at that conference on how they're using AI into their development workflow. Would love to know from your personal side, how do you use AI in your own development workflow? Yeah, totally. So like, I think, you know, um, I run a conference kind of like that conference for developers and we record all of the talks and we put them up on YouTube. We have 10 years worth of YouTube videos, but there's really like no good way to search them. So what I'm actually working on right now is putting all of the information about 10 years worth of talks in a vector database so that we can build a natural language search engine so that like, someone could just say like, ah, show me all the talks about React. Uh, and it's not just doing keyword searches. Like there might be like technologies or topics that are related to React, but the, the word React might not be in the abstract. Yeah. And the natural the natural language search will find those things. This is, you might have seen that there is a huge influx of AI, whether it's uh, being uh, using AI for code generation or for being able to fix bugs. Do you happen to use any AI tools for improving your productivity at all? Yep, I do. Um, I like to use it to turn a 30-minute task into a five-minute task. Okay. And I will never put code from my code base into it, but sometimes I'll ask it to write an example of something that I might try to do. Yeah. And it gives me a good idea. And maybe it's not perfect. But it's definitely very helpful. I'll be super honest. Like I'm a, in some ways, I'm a late adopter to stuff. Uh, a lot of people I knew were using GitHub Copilot for a long time, and they were recommending it, and I stayed away from it. I was like, hey, I want to write my own code. Yeah. And then I used GitHub Copilot for the first time maybe three months ago, and it was scary, like how good it was and how accurate it was. Yeah. So now, like I'm incredibly open-minded about like coding assistant tools um, because they're not replacing me as a developer, they're just sort of getting rid of a lot of boilerplate and they're like making me more productive. Um, I've heard about other tools, um, like I think someone was talking about a product called Cursor AI that I haven't had a chance to play with. Obviously, like I'm going to go check out pieces when I have a chance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of starting to dabble in these things, but I've already like, it's really changed like how I think about like, what are the things that I need to be good at versus what are the things that I sort of trust the assistant yeah. to help me with. But love to know about your thoughts about using uh, any sort of a developer tool that's driven by AI and how it it helps one's productivity and pro perhaps if you use any uh, productivity tools and how you use AI in your workflow. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I use AI constantly. I am a big proponent of using AI as part of your regular development or even outside of development, just part of regular life. Yep. Um, and what's what's really awesome about it is this is as bad as it's going to get. You know, like It's just going to get better from here, which is a very exciting. Yeah. So uh, I use, I, I've used Use Copilot, GitHub Copilot, in the past, uh, and I'm using Codium right now. Um, I got a good demo of Pieces yesterday, and it solves a problem that I have, which is I, I'm using ChatGPT and I'm chatting with it, and then like, oh, I need to like bring that into VS Code now, yep. and maybe I should have started that conversation with Codium in VS Code, but like now I need to take it into this GitHub issue, and I'm just like all over the place copy pasting from these different AI assistants, yep. and so yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to what uh, what pieces can do for my workflow not this isn't a marketing video they're not paying me to say that yeah, exactly um, but the pieces folks are actually really cool to chat with y'all yeah, are yeah. awesome so no I mean Kent you're awesome because I've had the opportunity to meet you probably for the third time now uh, initially we met at ATO in 2022 then at of course react rally which is such a wonderful experience you showed us around the entire Utah uh, and of course like the entire Salt Lake City as well uh, but of course I mean as you mentioned that that context switching, right? Even when you're using an AI tool, there's so much amount of context switching. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are just trying to make it simplified. Like how you can have one unified experience which can help you to transition very easily from your GitHub issue to your uh, to your VS Code if you're using VS Code. So, but yeah, thank, thank you so much for sharing that. And I mean, it's very rare to find these just people who are so proactive and so are upfront about using AI. I think like that's a, a very huge quality, right? Well, Thank you very much. I, I, I am not ashamed to say that uh, I like to 
use tools that make me more productive. And it, it surprises me the number of people who just reject AI uh, straight out yep. and um, and say, well, it generated something wrong, therefore it's bad. Uh, it's like, I mean, just like riding a bike, you need to learn how to like pedal the bike. Like exactly. it's, it's not bad just because you have to do a little bit of work here. Like yep. that's actually a good thing. So uh, even uh, for the last year and a half, everything that I have done has been with an AI assistant, including the videos I record for Epic we React and Epic Web, uh, because I think that it's important for students to learn how to use these tools effectively. Yep. So they got to see their teacher using them and, and like AI will generate this big thing and I'm evaluating, I'm showing you how to evaluate that code that was created. So I, yeah, definitely a big proponent of AI. You should be using it. It's a good idea. Yep. <laughs> There's so much more contextual information that engineers kind of like are loaded into our brains, yep. but the assistants don't have access to a lot of that stuff yet. So the more work that people can do to like add that context to my experience, like the more quickly we can build things and prototype and like ship. So uh, have you heard of any of the local large language models like Llama 3 or Gemma models which have come out which essentially allow you to run them on device? Are you Have you ever heard of those? I've heard of them but I don't really use them. I don't okay. use AI too often. Oh, okay. okay. Developers get really like fired up about like the latest greatest models. Yes! <laughs> but when you're using RAG or contextual techniques, like yeah. you can get amazing results with like you know whatever op like open you know open AI like three point you know three point five um, yeah. or like you know off the shelf open source models, right? Hmm. Because you're really just using it to construct you know, like to, con to kind of c construct the completion of the line of code or construct the natural language answer to the question, yeah. which even older models are really good at, um, so long as you give them like the most relevant information in the first place. And probably one final question is, how should people not use AI tools? Like what, should the, what are the things that they should not probably do based on your learnings? Uh, I think that, Right now, AI isn't very good at, uh, at certain things uh, that it may get better at. Um, I, I don't know. Like, uh, that that's hard to answer. I guess it kind of becomes intuitive to me that I'm not just going to trust it. I'm not going to say, should I go to the doctor yeah. and do whatever AI says uh, that I should do in that situation? But I am going to say, here are my symptoms. What do you think? Like, what should I be researching? Yeah. Um, I think it. I'm sure they you can. need to develop an intuition. I I, yeah. I don't know. I guess I trust AI about as much as I trust anything on the internet, which is to say, like not a lot. No, no. Um, but it gives me the right direction. Right direction. Um, yeah. And. Uh, uh, just like uh, if I hired an intern to help code with me, I'm going to be reviewing that code just as well. So I, I have no problems using AI for my code. Um, yeah, and, and like there are some questions around AI and uh, attribution of, of quality work that people are doing, and is it stealing? I, I have mixed feelings about all of that. Yeah. Um, but for right now, I'm using it. Uh, I'm using it as a tool that makes my life easier, and I can do more than I could before. Yep. Uh, not just like LLMs, but also like generating uh, uh, even like background music for videos that I'm putting together, like promos and stuff. Yep. Um, I, I use it for all sorts of things, and I think you just have to develop an intuition to know when is it not the right solution. Yeah. Thanks so much, yeah. man. High five. High five. It's all about how you use it, and of course, there is always security concerns, but those can be handled. Yeah, so. yeah. Just run it locally. Exactly. <laughs> That's run thing. it locally. The cool thing about pieces is that, like, you don't you don't really care which LLM is being used. It, uh, and I really appreciate that too. Thank you so much, Ken. This is wonderful. Yeah, All thank right. you. Yeah, high five. High five. <laughs>